Montalbano, the International Space Station Program Manager here in Baikonur. Joel, Soyuz is uh, here at the pad, ready to rock and roll for another launch for another crew to the station. How important is this launch in terms of beginning the process of returning the station to a larger crew complement in the weeks and months ahead, along with full research and operational capability? You know, Rob, every launch is important to us. Um, this year, you know, even among the COVID work, we've had a great year. Um, this summer and in, in early August, we finished the Demo 2 mission, had those had Bob and Doug up there for 60 plus days. After that, the Inkerman crew has been up there continuing our science and research. This launch that we're about to see this week, the start of an increment, the start of an increment that's going to bring us over 300 crew tended investigations on board, 70 of which will be new and just starting, setting the stage for the additional work we're going to do throughout the increment. Just a few weeks after this crew launches, we'll have the SpaceX Crew-1 adding four more people, so for a total of seven people on orbit. A few weeks after that, we'll have SpaceX-21, an unmanned cargo mission docking for the first time. Throughout this, we've been operating on the recently birthed Cygnus spacecraft that has brought science and research to the International Space Station. And then looking forward next year, a number of EVAs, a number of spacewalks to help us with maintenance on board, upgrades of the International Space Station, as well as helping out commercialization to the uh, European Space Agency on their Bartolomeo platform. So just an outstanding increment. We're ready, we're excited, and we're ready to go. Joel, we're just uh, three weeks away from the 20th anniversary of a permanent human occupancy of the International Space Station. First expedition launched 20 years ago, almost to the day. In the history books, how significant is this milestone in human space exploration and what does it uh, portend for the future? You know, 20 years on board the International Space Station, when we first started, no one could have expected the successes we're going to have. And it, it's bigger than just human spaceflight. The work we've done, the work we've done across the globe, over the 20 years, we've had participation with over 108 countries that have done science, research, outreach on board the International Space Station. You know, as we look forward and people write down what we've done, the fact that we've been able to operate below any political operations. We've been able to do this technically. We've been able to work across the globe. People will not only write chapters about the International Space Station, we'll have books dedicated to what we've done and the fact that our international sets the standard for everything international in the future. Steve Kerner, the Director of Flight Operations at the Johnson Space Center. Steve, here in Baikonur, Soyuz rocket behind you, ready to be uh, hoisted vertically, ready to roll in just a couple of days uh, for launch to the space station. In the complex world of flight operations, it has been a very challenging year, obviously, uh, with all the COVID activities uh, and precautions that everyone has had to take, other factors uh, to prepare Kate Rubens and her crewmates to fly. Uh, how challenging has all of this been, not just for the crew, but for flight controllers uh, back at JSC and in integrating everything that they've had to do to get ready uh, to support this mission and the other missions around it? You know, Rob, in flight operations, we kind of have two expressions, uh, accomplish the mission and take care of our people. And certainly, as you characterized the last several months, uh, taking care of our people is, is a required extra attention. 
I've been very impressed with um, the instructors, with the flight controllers, with all involved um, in preparing Kate and, and her crew for this mission. Um, certainly had to take extra steps uh, to mitigate uh, taking care of the station and the crew and, and those folks that uh, uh, have to be involved in preparing for this mission. Um, certainly where training could be done virtually or, or remotely, we, we uh, implemented measures to do those types of things. Uh, we had to, to deviate from the plan a little bit in that uh, international travel was also impacted and being able to send the crews to the places that we normally would for training. So again, very impressed with the effort uh, that individuals put forward to make sure that uh, Kate and her crew were, were well trained. Uh, we had to, to change some of that training protocol, but uh, very impressed um, on what we were able to accomplish. We certainly benefited from Kate and her experience. Um, and so we're able to take advantage of uh, that this is, this is not Kate's first flight to, uh, to the International Space Station. As you mentioned, very much looking forward to seeing her launch here in a couple days. And soon uh, the expansion of uh, the crew with the Crew-1, the SpaceX mission uh, forthcoming, uh, you're going to have seven people on board the station. How much more challenging is that going to be in terms of integrating flight operations and pulling off a day-to-day -day workload? You know, those are good problems to have, to have uh, uh, seven people in space. Looking forward to the challenges that that brings. Uh, put uh, quite, a, quite a bit of effort into preparing, uh, making sure that the, the crew time on orbit is well utilized. Uh, challenges the space station program to make sure the, that, that that amazing laboratory um, has the work ready for them. Um, looking forward to a full complement uh, of having more individuals on board the space station uh, for doing the science that it's there for us to take advantage of. So um, from things like just where they sleep, um, how they uh, um, do what they do on board, uh, having seven crew up there, um, good problems to have looking forward to implementing uh, uh, having them there. And finally, Steve, uh, just weeks away here from uh, a rather significant milestone, the 20th anniversary of a permanent human occupancy aboard the space station that began with Expedition 1's launch, could you have imagined that you could have gone two decades and counting with no break in having people up in orbit, a new generation that's never known anything but people in space at this point? How significant is this historic milestone? You know, Rob, I've, I've got an 18-year-old daughter and a 16-year-old son, and they have never known a time when there wasn't permanent presence in space. And when I pause and think about that, that's hugely significant. That's all they know. So as I, as I look back on that accomplishment and look forward to continued human presence in space, I can't help but think that the only reason we're able to be where we are is due to the, the partnership, the international partnership that, that's been put in place. Um, you know, here we are about to launch Cade and, and you know, Expedition 64. Uh, you know, I tip my hat to the Russian colleagues 64 expeditions, think about that. That is hugely significant and impressive on what we've been able to accomplish. Going forward to continue that human presence in space, um, it will only be um, obtainable with similar partnerships, whether they're international or industry partnerships. Um, I think the way I think about it is, is space flight is hard. And the only way we can be successful is work together in the partnerships like we've established in this International Space Station program. Um, so looking forward to continuing that presence as we, as we step into new partnerships with others.